Well, here it is, the conclusion to the Indiana Jones franchise. Something I'd like to believe, but then again, this is now the third time we've been led to believe that. The first time was 34 years ago. The only difference is that this time, it's the box office that seems to be providing the final nail in the coffin. Because this is a massive bomb, and there's no fridge for Indiana to take cover in this time. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Now, reaction to this movie so far has been interesting. As you'd expect, there are moderate takes, and then there are the extreme takes. Everything from, it's absolutely horrible, all the way to, it's the best Indiana Jones movie ever made. And while obviously everybody is entitled to their own opinion, I mean, I mean come on. Quite honestly, I went into this movie with pretty low expectations, and while I will say that it was better than I thought it would be, I wouldn't say it was great. In the end, it just felt unnecessary. A movie where they undid the conclusion of a character once again so that Disney could try to milk another Lucasfilm IP in order to get the most out of their investment. And it appears they've really overplayed their hand here because it looks like this thing is a total box office bomb. But more on that in a minute. It's interesting how the character of Indiana Jones in this movie seems to be following a formula that we've seen before. At the conclusion of the last movie, he was happy. He got married to Marion and that was it. That was the send off to the character. In Dial of Destiny, all of that has been undone. Indiana Jones is a grumpy old man, his personal life is broken, and something horrible has happened to his son. That is until a young woman shows up to shake him out of it and they go off on a mediocre adventure that makes you realize that while nostalgia has the power to sell tickets and move merchandise, it's not enough to truly recapture what made the original so iconic in the first place. Now, I personally hated Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Again, I thought the ending of The Last Crusade was a perfect ending for the character and for the franchise. In The Last Crusade, we got to see another side of Indiana Jones due to the introduction of his father and the dynamic of that relationship. In the end, he saves his father and rides off into the sunset. It's a great conclusion. You could argue that Kingdom of the Crystal Skull yet again added more to the character by introducing his son and having him end up with Marion. But in Dial of Destiny, that's all gone. So to me, it doesn't feel like there's more to add to the character. His motivation is just to get back what he had. And I guess it would be different if we got to see him going through losing all of that, but we don't. It happened before the story even starts. The only reason we know about it is through a few lines of dialogue. So it just felt kind of forced to me. All of it felt forced, quite honestly. It didn't feel like they really had a story to tell. You must choose. Choose wisely, for as the true grail will bring you life, the false grail will take it from you. Honestly, man, please just pick one so that we can go. I want to get the hell out of here. This place is creeping me out, and I'm pretty sure this guy's a ghost. You're a ghost, right? Yeah, see, dude, this is worse than that time you asked me to help you move. Really, you should see this guy's place. It is filled with crap, and it's all super heavy, you know? Every weekend he calls me to hang out. I don't know why he does it. I don't know why I still keep agreeing to it. He always calls me up like, hey, we're going out tonight, and I assume he means, you know, a bar, but instead we end up in some kind of a hidden temple that's filled with curses and traps and spiders. It's just not how I want to spend my Saturday, you know? And the worst part is, I don't even know what to prepare for. He, he doesn't even tell me if I should eat something first. Like, I was looking forward to ordering wings tonight. I don't even think that's gonna happen now. I have to give credit to Harrison Ford because he still seems very committed to the character, but even though these characters that we know and love may be timeless, the hard reality is that the actors who play them are not. In Dial of Destiny, there were a bunch of flashback scenes where they had to de-age Harrison Ford, and this was a huge undertaking. The visual effects for this movie required over 100 artists at ILM working for three years on this film. In the end, I thought the de-aging looked good for the most part, but there were certain shots where it just didn't work and it really took me out of it. And it's weird because even though they de-aged his appearance in those scenes, his voice still sounded like 
the voice of an 80 year old man. Otherwise, from a technical standpoint, the movie is fine, as you'd expect, but in terms of the story, it just didn't really feel like anything special. Indiana Jones is approached by his goddaughter, who is also an archaeologist, and is researching the Antikythera mechanism, which some believe could unlock the possibility of time travel. But guess who else wants the mechanism? These guys, of course. And so begins the cat and mouse game. Finding clues, traveling to different locations, getting captured, escaping, getting captured again, and so forth and so forth. From that perspective, it's what you'd expect from an Indiana Jones movie. It's just that I didn't find it as interesting or as exciting as some of the other ones. It's not that it's a horrible movie. It's just not that great, in my opinion. And I don't think it's on par with the original trilogy. And even though this is the first Indiana Jones movie not to be directed by Steven Spielberg, it's not like it was lacking in that department. I think James Mangold is a good director, and John Williams does the score, so in many ways, it very much feels like an Indiana Jones movie. But story-wise, for some reason, there's this feeling that the stakes just aren't that high. Which is strange, considering that the bad guys want to use the dial to change the course of history, but it never feels like there's that much of a buildup. There were some parts where I really wish the writing was better. There's this one scene where they make a getaway from the bad guys in a boat, and all the bad guys had to do was just take out their binoculars and go, okay, so they're headed that way. Let's, uh, let's go that way. And that's all they had to do to track them down again. It's also a long movie. It's two and a half hours and it feels like two and a half hours. At least it did for me. The last 20 minutes or so, I was just sitting there wondering, okay, really, when are you gonna wrap this up? Throughout the entirety of this movie, there was nothing to dispel the notion that this franchise had run its course a long time ago. I mean, hell, it's even in the posters. We've gone from excited and looking for adventure all the way to, oh, for the love of God, are you really dragging me out to do this again? Regardless of my feelings towards the movie, the numbers tell a story that is even more disappointing because it's looking like this gamble is not going to get anywhere close to paying off. The production budget for this movie has been reported to be over $300 million. Some have said that the final number was as high as $329 million, but let's just say 300 for the sake of argument. You add on another 100 million for promotion and advertising, that is easily the most expensive movie in this franchise. The movie only made $60 million domestically on opening weekend. And to put that into perspective, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull made 100 million opening weekend. And that was 15 years ago. Now this was the first Indiana Jones release since Disney bought Lucasfilm. So let's compare it to another Lucasfilm property, Star Wars. Not only that, let's compare it to a Disney Star Wars release and the worst performing Star Wars release to date. Solo. Solo was the first Star Wars movie to bomb at the box office, and even it made 84 million on its opening weekend. As of writing this video, it's been over a week since the movie came out. It's had two full weekends at the box office, and the movie has made $248 million worldwide. So yeah, it doesn't look good. This is a pretty big failure, but it begs the question, why? Is it possible that people are just getting tired of sequels? Maybe, but just one year ago, Top Gun Maverick had a domestic opening of $126 million and went on to gross almost $1.5 billion worldwide. Was it the marketing? Quite honestly, I don't remember seeing that many advertisements or promotions for it, even though apparently they spent $100 million on that. Maybe the movie just had too much working against it in order for people to really get excited for it. The last movie was Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and even though that movie was very successful at the box office, audience reaction seemed to be pretty divided. Add that to the fact that Harrison Ford isn't getting any younger and maybe getting enough people interested in this movie just wasn't going to happen, no matter how much money Disney threw at it. And the weird thing is, like a lot of other recent sequels I've talked about, I find it interesting that at parts, the movie almost felt like a metaphor for itself. This whole idea of if I could only go back in time, I mean, it's something that everybody can relate to, but the reality is, it's just not gonna happen. And this movie in itself feels like it's trying to go back and recapture 
what was so great in the past. And sure, there are elements here and there that evoke feelings of nostalgia. Maybe that's all some people are looking for, and that's fine. But it looks like Lucasfilm overestimated how many times they could go back to that well of nostalgia with a big budget movie. There have been rumors lately that this could spell the end for Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. There's a lot of fans who have wanted her fired for how the Star Wars sequels were handled, but the only thing that really matters to Disney is how these properties have been performing. Even though Solo bombed at the box office and interest in the Star Wars shows seems to be waning, as a whole, the movies made a lot of money. So is this debacle big enough for them to make a change in leadership? For now, that remains to be seen, but you can't ignore just how big of a loss this is. I mean, you might be thinking, hey, $248 million worldwide in just over a week, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is, but not for a movie that cost 400. I know there's a lot of people out there who felt that this was a proper send off. I don't feel that way. To me, this just felt like an effort to wring out every last drop from this franchise while Harrison Ford is still able to move. So let me know in the comments, were you interested in seeing this movie? Why or why not? But that's pretty much it for this one. As usual, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all next time. And they're never quick adventures. They usually last all weekend. And then I have to come home and try to explain to everybody where I was. You think anybody believes me when I show up late for work on Monday and say, hey everybody, sorry I'm late. My buddy took me ancient grave robbing and I almost got crushed by a giant falling statue because I stepped on the wrong stone. It's also sweltering hot in these places, right? Like it's not just me. They never seem to design these things with airflow in mind. Why is that? Oh, 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 oh,